As our program grows bigger, it may contain many lines of code. Instead of putting everything in a single file, we can use modules to separate codes in separate files as per their functionality. This makes our code organized and easier to maintain. Module is a file that contains code to perform a specific task. A module may contain variables, functions, or classes. Let's see an example. Let's create a new file with the name of calculation. In the calculation file, we have defined a function add inside the calculation.py file. The function takes in two numbers and returns their sum. We can use the import keyword to to import any module in another file. We have created a file with the name of calculation.py, so we can import our module by using import command like this. Import calculation. Now after importing the module, we can use all the functions defined in the calculation.py file. We have created add function earlier, we can use this like this by using print statement. Print module name dot function name and arguments which will be passed to get the results. Let's call the add function again to calculate once more. Remember if you used any other symbol instead of comma between the two values it will return the error. So always use comma to spare it the values. Our module is working fine. We can directly add the specific function from module and in this way we don't need to write the module name each time when we call the function, we just need to call the function directly. We can import a specific function by typing from module name import function name, in our case, our module name is calculation and our function name is add, so we can import our function directly like this, now we don't need to add the method name in beginning of the function add, so I am going to remove this. Now our function is working fine, if you want to add all the functions defined inside the calculation module, you can use asterisk to import all the functions. So guys, this is how we can create a new module and used it in another file, in the next exercise, we are going to learn how can we perform all the math calculation like add, subtract, multiply and divide by using a module, let's extend our module to add the more functions. In the previous exercise, we created a module named add. Now, we're extending this module by adding new functions. First, let's implement the subtract function. This function will take two arguments, a and b, and return the result of subtracting b from a. Next, let's define the multiply function, which takes two values and returns their product. Finally, let's implement the divide function to divide two values. To use these functions, we need to import them. We can either import specific functions or import all functions using the asterisk sign.
Once imported, we can utilize these functions in our code. Let's start by adding two values using the add function. For example, 10 plus 20 equals 30. Next, let's use the subtract function. For instance, 50 minus 20 equals 30, indicating that our second function is working correctly. We can also customize the names of the imported functions. For instance, if we frequently use the subtract function, we can import it with a shorter name like sub. This makes it more convenient to use throughout our code. It's essential to note that these custom names are valid only within the file where the module is imported. If you intend to use these functions in other files within your project, you'll need to import the module using the import function. Moving on to the third function, let's use multiply. Multiplying 10 by 10 gives us 100. Lastly, let's employ the divide function. Dividing 50 by 10 results in 5. You can also customize the name of the divide function upon import. and it will function the same way as the original divide function. Let's enhance this code and add an if condition, so that we can perform all type of calculations by entering the values in an operand like plus, minus, divide or multiply. So I am going to add if conditions in my code, this code will accept two inputs from the user and then ask the user what he want to do, and perform the calculation as per operand given by user. And if the user given a wrong operand then it will return the error invalid operand. Let's execute this code to perform calculations. We'll input two values and an operand to specify the operation. For instance, if we want to add the values, we'll use the plus operand. We've entered two values 10 and 20 and an operand to add them. The result is displayed correctly. Now, let's test the code with other operands. Let's subtract 30 from 50. And it's showing the correct result. Let's divide 100 with 20. And it returned the answer 5. 
Now, let's try an invalid operand. I am going to give underscore as operand. As anticipated, we received an error message indicating an invalid operand. Our code is functioning properly. In this video, we will cover different methods for getting date and time using the date time module and time module in Python. Later in this video, we will learn how to create a digital clock using a Python module. Let's dive in. This code retrieves the current date and time using the now function from the date time module in Python. Here, the date time module is imported, which provides classes for working with dates and times in Python. The now function from the date time module is called. This function returns a date time object representing the current date and time. The now variable stores this date time object. Finally, the print function is used to display the value of the now variable, which contains the current date and time. When you run this code, it will output the current date and time. Here is another example, in which we can retrieve the current date using the date time module. This line imports the date time module in Python. The date time module provides classes for working with dates and times. Here, the today function from the date time module is called. This function returns a date time object representing the current local date. The current date variable stores this date time object. Finally, the print function is used to display the value stored in the current date variable, which contains the current local date. This code snippet utilizes the date class from the date time module in Python to work with dates. Let's break down the code. This line imports the date class specifically from the date time module. The date class represents a date, year, month, day, in the Gregorian calendar. The today function is called on the date class to obtain a date object representing today's date. This object is assigned to the variable today. These lines print the year, month, and day of today's date, respectively. They access the attributes year, month, and day of the date object today and display their values. When you run this code, it will print the current year, month, and day of the system state. This code will display the calendar for the current month and year. Let's break down this code. Importing necessary modules. Date time, this module supplies classes for manipulating dates and times. Calendar, this module allows you to output calendars and provides various functions related to the calendar. The today function from the date time dot date class is called to retrieve the current date. It returns a date object representing today's date, which includes attributes like year, month, and day. Here, the year and month attributes of the date object today are accessed and assigned to variables y and m respectively. These variables store the current year and month. The month function from the calendar module is used to generate a formatted text representation of the calendar for the specified year, y, and month, m. This function returns a string containing the calendar, which is then printed to the console using the print function. If you want to print the calendar of any other month, just change the value of month variable. For example I want to display the June calendar, then I have to write the in numbers like this.
This code creates a simple clock application using the Tkinter library in Python. Let's go through it step by step. Importing necessary modules. Tkinter, it is the standard GUI toolkit for Python. Tkinter.ttk, it contains themed Tkinter widgets that have a more modern appearance. Time, it provides various time-related functions, including Striftime which is used to format time. This creates a Tkinter window with the title, Clock. This function retrieves the current time using Striftime, which formats the time as hours, minutes, seconds, and am slash pm. It updates the text of the LBL label widget with the current time. LBL. After, 1000th time, schedules the time, function to be called again after 1000 milliseconds, 1 second. Styling the label widget. This creates a label widget, LBL, with a specified font, background color, and foreground color. Placing the clock label. This places the label widget, LBL, at the center of the Tkinter window. Calling the time, function and running the Tkinter event loop. Time, is initially called to start updating the clock. Main loop, starts the Tkinter event loop, which waits for events, like button clicks or window resizing, and processes them. When you run this code, it will create a simple clock GUI displaying the current time with a purple background and white text. The time will update every second. So viewers, here is how we can create our own module or we can use predefined Python modules to perform several tasks. Please like my video, if you have enjoyed watching it, and subscribe to my channel to get notified on every new video.